Hi, so in a previous video series, we actually made this thing, which is a, a reciprocating air engine. Now, we made it this way because I think it's important to understand things that went before, how they were made and how they work. And then when you can reproduce that, then you've got a sure base to move forward on because you know what you're doing at that stage. You've got the thing working. What we're going to do now is make modifications to this. Now, this would actually built, I suppose, in the 18th century, maybe the 17th century. And if you think about it, everything that we actually did then involved turning. So you were turning bowls, you were um, grinding wheat, you were moving carts, it was all turning motion. So of course, everybody was really interested in making stuff turn. Now engines like this, steam engine air, and air engines, are obviously linear, they move up and down. So the issue at the time was how to change that into rotary motion and of course use a crankshaft to do that. Now as things developed that legacy had a big impact so even now most of the things we do all involve rotary motion. We're all very interested in making things turn. So the immediate response you have to something like this is okay if we want to make this a generator what we have to do is stick a generator on this rotary bit and a rotary generator and that's what people do they, they just attach on a rotary generator and that's nothing wrong with that but what you're doing really is piling legacy upon legacy because these days of course we're actually much more interested in linear motion with the adv advent of things like cnc milling that sort of stuff linear motion is um become acutely interesting. There's a great motor being developed at the moment, which is a linear motor for running a car, a petrol car. It's based on the two-stroke uh, engine, and it's a free-piston engine. Really interesting stuff if you want to look that up. But we've already got a linear motion right here, and we've added this rotary stuff on because of legacy issues. So, okay, what about we take all this rotary stuff off, because then we won't need to build it. And, and I hear you're complaining that you spent time building it based on the other videos, and I think that's really important that you did that. But we can actually now, I hate to tell you this, take this rotary stuff off and maintain the linear aspect of this motor. Of course, the issue is going to be moving the valves in sequence with moving the piston, but that's what we're going to do. So here it is with the modifications made. I haven't done anything tremendous with it. All I've done is put it on a bit of builder's board instead of that bit of wood, and I've put the valves closer to it. I've actually put a new pipe on the valve, which is bigger than the one that went on before, and that's entirely the amount of work that I've done. Now, this, because it's no longer attached to a crank, qualifies as a free piston. Okay, so because of the piston timing and the valve timing, this actually works in one direction. That is, if I'm blowing it, it's no good me putting a vacuum on, unfortunately. Now, if I'm blowing it, what should happen is that piston should be forced to the other side, of course. Now, the valve, because it's attached to nothing, won't do anything unless I attach it to something. So it occurred to me that it might be an idea to put something like this on. If I put something like that on the piston slider, then as I blow in there and that piston travels down, it'll hit the valve and push the valve to the other side, and then that will be ready to go the other way if I continue blowing. Because if I then have another slider and put that on the other end, what should happen is that that valve will move backwards and forwards as the piston moves backwards and forwards. So it's an interesting idea, and I've set it up, so I'm going to give it a puff and we'll see if we can get a couple of backwards and forwards on that. <laughs> well, it went backwards and forwards and the piston the valve dropped out. Let's try that again. Okay, that really is promising. I don't know if you're seeing this, but that piston is reciprocating as long as I can blow in there with a certain amount of breath. Of course, I can't keep blowing for half an hour. But the idea certainly works, and that's very cool. This is a first stage effort, so I think there are going to be quite a few problems with it. I think it still needs something to overcome that position there. 
I think something needs to happen. Either valve timing or maybe spring or something like that to bring it backwards a little bit like that so that it will then go all the way. So I think maybe a couple of springs at the end that it works against might actually be uh, really good. The valve obviously shot out so we need some restrictor on the valve and of course these have a tremendous amount of drag because they're just resting on the on the ground so to speak. So it needs maybe some slider arrangement but clearly the idea works. Very cool. Now, why would you bother doing something like this? Because, you know, it's an air engine. They've been around for a couple of hundred years. Well, this free piston design actually is the forefront of petrol engines at the moment. What you do is that cylinder gets wrapped with coils of wire, and then the piston in the center gets magnets put into it. So, of course, as it zips backwards and forwards, then you get generation. You get a linear alternator. The thing about this is there is no crank mechanism and so you don't get all those mechanical losses in the crank mechanism. That's what makes it really, really exciting. Now I've obviously made a high volume low pressure system because I want to put high, a lot of air under low pressure in there to generate some current. So that's what I'm doing with it. So that's what I've got to. The proof of concept actually works as long as I have enough puff. I need to source something to get some air in there. I'm not 100% sure what. As you notice, these started to come off because I wasn't sure they are going to work, so I've just put them in there. So something better needs fixing on there, and then possibly springs, possibly restrictors on the valve. But I'll continue working with that because I find that very promising, and it's certainly an early stage prototype of a air-driven linear generator. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you because it certainly got me excited, so I hope it sparked some interest, I hope it sparked some ideas in you and that you work on it and develop things along, and it's really the outgrowth of the you know, Series 1-5 to five of building the air engine that we did. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please do remember to subscribe, and I'll see you again.